the Lord's Prayer. But actually, it was not the Lord's Prayer. It was the Lord teaching us how to pray. It's actually the believer's prayer. But let's read it. You're familiar with it. Let's read it together. Therefore, pray in this way. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. Church, I'm teaching from the life-changing, life-building, life-blessing subject today, entitled, Honoring Our Father. Honoring Our Father. You know, uh, there's, there's, a, there's an anointing on this message. I know that because I had a whole other message uh, that I was going to teach today. The message was already finished by Tuesday. I already sent in all the sermon slides and everything. A funny thing happened on the way to the sanctuary. Uh, Friday night, the Lord, in, in Bible study, the Lord changed my message. So, touch your neighbor and say, get ready to receive. There's something that God really wants us to understand here. And I thank God that we had a wonderful Father's Day tribute to our natural fathers up to this point. Let's give God praise for that. All the natural fathers have been acknowledged, have been prayed for. But I'm here to tell you today that God has spoken to my heart and said it's time that we honor our Father which is in heaven. Yes. It, 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 it's a different way of thinking about Father's Day. Because when we think about Father's Day, we all say, you know, I'm going to honor my daddy who did this and did that. But I'm here to tell you that, see, everybody doesn't have a father, a natural father, that they can honor. Everybody doesn't have. Some people don't even know their father. And some people didn't have a good relationship with their father. But I'm here to tell you today that if you're a born-again believer, you can have a happy Father's Day today because you can honor our Father, which is in heaven. Somebody say amen. Amen. Now, listen, I want you to know that the theme for this local church in this year, 2015, is what is our theme? It's what? Enjoy true prosperity. That's our theme. And that's a very important thing. You heard Brother Cooper talk about this teaching that I've been on, and I'm probably going to be teaching that till Jesus come, until I go, Brother Cooper. I call it TPT, True Prosperity Teaching. Somebody say TPT. TPT. See, the world offers you false prosperity. False prosperity. They offer you FPT, false prosperity. And it's false because the world says that the greatest priority is material riches. Y'all know the world says that. Yeah. Money make the world go round. That's what everybody says, right? Yes. You know? Uh, uh, so, so well, you know, they say money, money, money talks, right? Everything else walks, right? In other words, the bottom line is the world is teaching us to love and to chase after money. But here's the thing. That's a lie. That is false because if it was true, then the love of money would be the greatest thing. If, if what they're telling us is right... The love of money would be the greatest thing. And you know that's a lie because the Bible tells us so. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 10. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 10. It says, for the love of money is the source or root of all kinds of evil. Somebody say the root of all evil. Of all evil. I didn't say you don't need money. I didn't say you can't use money. But don't fall in love with it. And don't think it's number one in your life because the love of money is the root of all evil. It says, some have been so eager to have it that they have wandered away from the faith. Or I can say it another way. Some have been so eager to have it that they would sell their soul. Can I get an amen? amen. Sell their mama down the river for some money. Come on now. Listen. It says, some have been so eager to have it that they wandered away from the faith and have broken their hearts with many sorrows. You want a, you want a, a, a case in point on that? I'll give you one. Judas chapter 1 verse 1. He was so in love with that money. For 30 pieces of silver, he sold out our Lord. And do you know, as much as God is a forgiving God, as much as God is a merciful God, the Bible calls him the son of perdition. And in other words, after he did that, there was no hope for him. 
And he knew it. And he went on and hanged himself and went straight to hell. Somebody say amen. amen. Here at Truth and Love, I don't offer you FPT, false prosperity teaching. I offer you TPT, true prosperity teaching. It's true prosperity teaching because it's based on God's word. It's based on the Bible. And the Bible says that the greatest priority is not, listen to this, the greatest priority in your life is not material riches, but the richness of your love relationship with the Father. Amen. I'm going to say that again. The greatest thing in your life is not material riches, but the richness of your love relationship with the Father. And you know what? Brother Cooper was saying, it, you know, it is all about relationships, but I got news for you. Your, your, the first relationship has to be right before the other relationships are right. It is about, how many of y'all love, how many of y'all love your family? Anybody here love your family? Yeah. Everybody love your family, right? Well, guess what? Your love relationship with your family is a function of your love relationship with God. Amen. In other words, if you don't love God, you ain't going to have no love in you to love your family. You're not going to have that unconditional love that you need to, like the brother said, to, to be able to forgive your family and to be able to strive with your family and to deal with imperfect people just like you're an imperfect person. Can I get an amen? amen. Church, I'm here to tell you that true prosperity is not first material. It's not what the world's trying to sell you in a video. It's not all the it's not all the cars. It's not all the houses. It's not all the bling. It's not all the fame. It's not first material, but it is first spiritual. Say true prosperity. True prosperity. Is first spiritual. It's first spiritual. Then material. Then material. Ah, I like that. See, God is not unrighteous. He's not, not trying to tell you you have to take a vow of poverty. He's just trying to say, get your life in order. Get your priorities in order. Don't put money first. Put God first. When you put God first, money cometh. Can I get an answer? Does anybody know what I'm talking about up in here? Can I get a witness up in here? Listen, it's not the love of money. It's the love of God. That's what you need to be focused on. That's what we need to be focused on. It's the love. Watch this. If you love money, you're going to lose God. But if you love God, you're going to get God and money. I wish somebody get that today. If you love God, you're going to get God and money. But if you love, if you love money, you're going to not get God and you're going to lose the little money you got. You don't love God, you know, you, listen, you don't love God. The Bible says uh, 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 a fool and his money are soon part. You don't love God, money cometh and money goeth. Money, the Bible says money takes wings and flies away. Anybody, any witnesses of the meaning? Come on. You're like, where did that money go? I thought I had some money in that drawer. Oh, let me see you work this side of the room. Y'all not, y'all not feeling. I thought I had, what, it, what, I, I looked at the bank account, I thought I had some money. It, NSF, not sufficient. What happened to that check? Honey, we need to talk. Come on now. Somebody say, money coming. Money coming. And money going. money going. Listen, true prosperity is when your love for God is first in your life and first in your heart. I wish I could get an amen up in here. Now, years ago, I believed this, and I kept wondering if there was anybody else that felt the same way, because I kept listening to all these preachers on TV, and they were all talking about getting money, getting more money, more money, more money, and, and you know, more money, more problems, right? But they were all talking about getting more money, and then all of a sudden I heard somebody quote this scripture, and when I heard this scripture, I said, now that's it. That's the truth. And if you get this in your heart, you're going to be blessed, and you're going to be highly successful, and you're going, to, you're going to have the joy of the Lord, which is your strength. Here it is. Matthew chapter 6. Somebody say, this is the scripture. This is the scripture. Matthew chapter 6, and verse number, starting at verse number 31. Now I have gone into the Good News translation because I, I King James is fine, but I want you to hear it in this translation. Because it really brings it home. Matthew 6, 31 says, Therefore, stop worrying about what you shall eat, drink, or how you shall be clothed. In other words, stop stressing over and worrying about material stuff. Somebody say, stop worrying. Stop worrying. And then it goes on to say, these are the things the unbelievers worry about. In other words, folk that don't have a love relationship with the Father through the Son, they worry about that stuff because they're trying to make it happen. You know, we got a lot of make it happen folk. I gotta, I gotta make it happen. You know, it, 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 see, 
when you have a love relationship with the Father, you understand that the Father is going to grace you to make it happen. You don't have to do it all by yourself. Amen? Amen. He says, these are the things the unbeliever worry about. Your heavenly Father knows you have need of these material things. God knows you need material things. He's the one created them. Somebody say, duh. Yeah. Now watch this, verse 33. Instead of worrying, stressing, and chasing material things, chasing your promotion, chasing your bonuses, chasing your uh, uh, next job, chasing your uh, 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 dividends, whatever it is, chasing your life insurance, chasing all that stuff. Somebody say, instead, instead. look what it says, seek first and foremost the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his way of doing things, and God will give you all these things. If I have a witness up in here, somebody give God a shout of glory. Somebody say glory to God. If you haven't figured it out, you should have figured it out by today. Stop chasing the world. Stop chasing money. Chase a great relationship with God, and God will give you everything you need. And then some. Amen? Amen. Yeah, turn somebody and say, figure it out. Yeah. Today, we come to honor our Heavenly Father. It's Father's Day. Somebody say, Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's and today, we come to honor our Heavenly Father. Praise the Lord. Well, let's see. How are we going to honor our Heavenly Father? Well, let's look at this. Point number one. We all can honor our Heavenly Father because if we're born again believers, we have to, listen, we have the same Heavenly Father. Amen? Amen. Come on, somebody. I said we have the same Heavenly Father if we're born again. Amen. Somebody say, let's honor, let's honor our, Father. our Father. See, we, we're together. We are family. We're more family than just the, even natural family. Yeah, we got some natural family members in here. But I'm here to tell you, one of the reasons why I constantly call people brother and sister is to remind me that I'm your brother and you my sister. We're part of the same family because we got, I don't care what we look like, we got the same daddy. Amen. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. Say it with me. Say, we got the same daddy. We got the same daddy. Listen, point number one today is we honor our father because we recognize who he is. Oh, come on, somebody. Here we go. We honor our Father because we recognize who he is. What do you mean, Pastor? Well, what did that, uh, what did that prayer say that Jesus said? He said, our Father, which art in heaven, that's, the, that's where he is, which art in heaven. But he says, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. That means honored is your name. Somebody say, who is he? Yeah, we recognize who he is. Well, I'm here to tell you who he is. You know, uh, it's interesting because if you're not careful, if you don't know who God is, somebody else will tell you who he is. You, you, you ever seen, a, uh, you know, they got a coat called the Jehovah's Witnesses. And they come and they knock on everybody's door. Anybody have knocked on your door before? Yeah. And you know what? You got to be careful because they'll get you to slip into that coat. And one of the key ways they've gotten a lot of people into that coat is because they tell people, the, the Christians didn't tell you. God's real name. But we're going to tell you, and see, we're the ones that really know him. So we tell you his real name, you need to be over here with us because other folks just call him God, but he has a name. And they call him Jehovah because they say that's his name. And you know, a lot of people, they, they, they pull a lot of people in because they're going, yeah, they must know the true and the living God because they know him by name. And everybody else just calling him God. But I'm here to tell you, don't you fall prey to that stuff. The next time that somebody who's a Jehovah's Witness comes to you and they tell them, tell you that they know God's real name, I'm going to give you some ammunition today. Somebody say, give it to us, Pastor. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you back them right on up and tell them, say, listen, you know God as Jehovah, but I know God in his original name. His name is Yahweh Elohim. Back back, homeboy. Listen, you know that Jehovah is a transliteration of Yahweh, but I'm here today to tell you that the name Yahweh, Elohim, somebody say Yahweh, Yahweh. Elohim, Elohim is listed in the Bible 540 Five times. It was first listed in Genesis 2 and 4 when it said that God made everything, the heaven and the earth. In fact, the very first scripture in the Bible, in Genesis, where it says in the beginning, God, that word God is Elohim. Now, today you're going to learn something. You're going to learn that when we come to our Father, we can call him Yahweh Elohim. Yahweh means 
the self-existing God. In other words, Yahweh means the creator. In other words, you listen, uh, 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 in order for you to be the creator, you have to have existed before anything created. Are y'all hearing me today? So God, Yahweh, is the one who exists. No one created him. No one uh, 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 made him. Before there was anything made, he, he is, he was, and he always will be. So when we come to God, we can call him by his name. Somebody say Yahweh. Yahweh.